Now note, when you think about the bank feeds, if I go to like a bank statement here, the bank statement kind of reflects what the bank feeds are gonna be providing uh, to the system. So this is all the information that the system has. So we can say, okay, this is what the system has with this information. How can it be used to kind of possibly shortcut or enter transactions into my accounting system? So up top in a bank statement, we usually have a summary and then we've got the deposits and the withdrawals or decreases to the checking accounts. Now with the deposits, these are the types of things that are coming in on the bank feeds, the stuff that's on your bank statement. We know the date, although it's not the date that you actually made the deposit, it's the date that the deposit cleared, but it's still pretty close in time because it shouldn't take much time for a deposit to clear, usually one to three days. We know the amount, which hopefully the amount that's being deposited matches our system uh, if we're trying to match it out, but we know the dollar amount, of course, and then if there's an electronic transfer, then you might have some more information. So if you just deposited cash, for example, this might be all the information that the bank has. But if you deposit, if you deposited uh, an electronic transfer that came directly from a platform like YouTube or something, then you might have a memo which gives you added information. That added information usually has the, enough information to know who it came from, like the customer, but it won't automatically populate the customer. Therefore, we're gonna have to add that information into the system in order for QuickBooks to pull that information to the system to make the financial statements with. On the checks or decreases side of things, then we have the date, but if we actually wrote a physical check the date is not as as relevant because it could take a long time for a check to clear. That's when we have this big outstanding uh, component, which which is where we, we would want to enter the check first in that kind of situation and use the bank fees as a double check. And then you've got the amount. Now, if you did electronic transfers, the date once again is much more relevant because it's closer to the date that the actual transaction took place and we won't have a check number, but we might have those transactions again uh, in the memos. So the memo might have the information to help us know who the vendor is, although QuickBooks can't just make the vendor from the information in the memo. So you can pull the information from the memo to create the vendor and then start to memorize the transactions. So that's the general idea. So note that QuickBooks from the information from the bank does not have enough information to just pull that information in and create your financial statements. You're gonna have you're gonna have to add at the least the customers uh, and and the vendors, right? And then the accounts are gonna have to be added: the income accounts with the deposits, typically income accounts, and the expense accounts with uh, the decreases to the checking account. 